Jim Brown is fearless. A fighter from birth to his end chapter today. The words for Jim Brown are greatest ever. Raised by his grandmother in St. Simons Island, Georgia, he joined his mother at the age of eight in the wealthy suburb of Manhasset, Long Island, where she worked as a domestic. When I was a little boy, my father disappeared. My great-grandmother raised me until I was eight. My mother was basically a teenager. I was in a country town in Georgia and some wonderful people in Manhasset came to my rescue, made sure I understood education, understood that I had talent, and they guided me, and I was very fortunate to take that advantage of that. And I became successful. And I was equipped with that weapon of education, dedication, hard work. Those principles allowed me to excel. And wherever I go, whatever I do, there's no way that I will ever forget those people. And there'd be no way that I would not appreciate what they did for me. Amen. 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 He was a superb high school athlete, a standout in football and lacrosse. When discussing the greatest running backs of all time, there isn't ever a conversation that doesn't include the great number 32, Jim Brown. But what many don't know about Brown is that he's one of the greatest to play another sport, lacrosse. Brown believed that it was on the lacrosse field where he could truly showcase what kind of athlete he really was. An All-American in lacrosse and football, he was the number one draft pick in 1957 for the Cleveland Browns and began a dominance on the field that was far beyond yards gained. This is Jim Brown, the most devastating ball carrier in the history of football. I thought he was going to be a great back. It turns out that he's the greatest running back of all time. You catch yourself in every way, stamina-wise, mentally, Courage. Jim Brown, the greatest running back that has ever breathed. He had great balance, he had great speed, and he had great size. At 235 pounds, he could run 100 yards in under 10 seconds. When he made up his mind to do it, he was going to do it. You couldn't knock him off his feet. He always shocked everybody how fast he was. Power. I mean, he had power. You didn't see nobody knocking nothing. Look at the film. You don't see nobody knock him back. You see him go in the stacks and he come out. He never missed a game. I think that says all you need to know about his toughness. Nobody could hurt him. Nobody could touch him. Nobody was better. He proved it every Sunday. The 64 Browns were, as Jim Brown and so many of the other players have emphasized, a team. Not just a champion, but a championship team. It is with tremendous pleasure and honor that I present to this team, the 1964 Cleveland Browns, a trophy to commemorate an unforgettable and extraordinary championship season. During the height of his football prowess, he stood up front and center in support of Muhammad Ali's fight for his Muslim beliefs against the war. And if we believed him and trusted him, we could then back him up at the risk of whatever we had to take. In other words, 
we knew it was a great risk. And then in my office in Cleveland, in the back room, we all got together for about five hours. And he thanked us for uh, being there with him. We agreed that we would fully support his particular stance and give him that public support. Having cemented his football legacy, he continued his journey on another road, the big screen. Jimmy Brown as Napoleon Jefferson. Jefferson is any man fighting for recognition against the odds, says Brown. I think I understand him pretty well. Jim used his platforms to inspire every generation to do the same. Papa Brown, Tim Brown, I sat below your, below your legs and you looked down at me and you said I'm passing the torch to you. Not because of fear, but because of respect. Because people will listen to you, you said. Thank you. To play in the NFL is an honor, a privilege, not simply a right. I grew up watching, idolizing, and dreaming about running the football like the legendary Jim Brown. My first four years, therefore, was very easy because it was Jim Brown up the middle, Jim Brown to the left, Jim Brown to the right, and occasionally a pitch out to Bobby Mitchell. Talk about Hall of Famer Jim Brown and the passion he had from, for the game. And Paul related the story how Jim drove from the college all-star game all night so that he could be at the very first practice. Well, that's passion. How would he want to be remembered? Let him tell you. Remember that the arrogant, the bad Jim Brown can be humble when he is given true love and when he is able to talk about people that he truly respects. So thank you very much.